Hey, it's Dave from CG Shortcuts. Today, we're gonna do this. We're creating an abstract looping background in Cinema 4D. Okay, the first thing we wanna do is set up our scene. Let's open our render settings and set it to HD 1920 by 1080. And we'll make sure the frame rate is at 24 frames per second. We'll close this up. We'll hit Control D on the keyboard to bring up the project settings. And we'll make sure our frames per second matches here. So we'll make that 24 as well. So we want our looping background to last for four seconds. So four times 24 is 96. So we need 96 frames down here. And we'll stretch that out. And now we're ready to get started. Let's come up here and bring in a plane. And now we want to create a cool pattern that we can use to drive some displacement on here. And we're actually going to drive it with a material. So let's come down here and double click to create a new one. And we'll drag that onto our plane. Then back down here, we'll double click to open this up. So under the color channel here, where it says texture, we'll click on this arrow and we want to bring in a noise. And we can see that noise is showing up on our plane now. Let's go back here and click into our noise and have a look at some of these settings. Okay, so the first thing I want to change is the noise itself. And there are loads and loads of different noises. But one of my old favorites is the hammer or hammer. So we'll grab that. And that gives us this funky effect. So let's customize this a bit. We'll start by bringing the octaves down so it's not such a complicated pattern. Something like one might be a good start. I'm liking that. We could even make this pattern a bit bigger by bringing up the scale. Let's try 150. And that's zoomed it in a bit. You'll notice if we hit play now, there's no animation. And that's because we need to add a bit of animation speed. I don't want it going too fast, so let's just put a value of 0.2 in here. So now if we hit play, it's still not animating. What's going on? I think we need to go over to the editor setting here and switch on the old animate preview button. That's updated there. So hopefully if we play that back, we've got animation. It's looking pretty cool, but it's not looping just yet. So to loop this up, we'll go back to our color channel and back into our noise. And next in the list, funnily enough, is our loop period. We know we want a four second loop here because we've got 24 frames a second and 96 frames on our timeline. So we'll whack a four in here. And now if we hit play and wait till it gets to the looping point at the end of our timeline, we've now got a seamless loop. Okay, so now we want this pattern to drive some displacement. So we'll close this up for now. And with our plane selected, we'll come up to our deformers menu and we'll bring in a displacer. If we hold shift, it should automatically apply itself correctly to our plane as it's done here. But we're not seeing any displacement effect just yet. We need to tell our displacer to use the color channel in our material here to drive the displacement. So let's come down to the shading tab. We don't want to use the custom shader. So we'll switch that out to color because we want to use a color channel and it's asking for a texture tag. Here's our texture tag. We'll grab that and drag it into there. And now we've got some pretty nasty looking displacement going on. I think this is to do with the resolution of our plane. If we grab that guy, you can see we're pretty low. We've only got 20 by 20 segments. So if we want some finer details, let's crank this up. Let's say 500 each. And now we've come across yet another issue. Our noise pattern isn't matching up with our displacement pattern. This is one of those little annoying things that took me ages to figure out but there's actually a super simple way to fix this. If we go back into our material and into our noise, all we need to do is come down to the space setting here and change the projection to UV 2D. And now our displacement is matching our color. And that's looking pretty cool, but I think we could add a little bit more detail to this. There's a nice little effect that you can add to noise shaders to give it an interesting look. This little guy down here, the cycles. If we turn that up, maybe a value of 1.5, we can easily get a bunch more detail in there. And I'm liking how that's looking. We could also try turning on the absolute value here, and that can also give you some interesting results. And we can actually adjust the intensity of this directly with the contrast slider here. If we bring that down a bit, we can soften that effect up. All right, looking good. Let's give it a play. All right, things are looking pretty good. But you might notice if we stop that and zoom in a bit, we've got some pretty jaggedy edges happening here. So there's a few ways we can fix that. 
Firstly, we can try coming up to our deformers and bringing in a smoothing deformer. Then we'll just move this guy below our displacer in the hierarchy here, so it affects it after. And that seems to be already working. Let's close this again for now. To use our smoothing deformer correctly and to prevent it from doing weird things, let's just rewind. And on the first frame of our timeline, we'll hit initialize. And that's stored some of the data into memory here. And we can fine tune some of the settings here to get the right look. And that seems to have done a fairly decent job. Another option you could do is with our plane selected, we could just bring in the old subdivision surface. If we hold Alt, it should automatically apply itself. And we're not seeing too much difference here, but if we try to render this, it should look nice and smooth, just like this. Okay, we can probably turn that subdivision surface off while we continue working on this. The next step is to add some color to this. So let's come down to our materials here and we'll rename this guy to something like displace because it's driving the displacement. Then we'll hold control and drag it across here to make a duplicate. And let's call this color because it's going to be driving the color. Then we can apply this guy to our plane. We'll drag that on top here and we'll open it up and have a look at its settings. You can see we've got a duplicate of the noise here as well. So we want to keep that, but we want to colorize it. And the effect that we use to do that is actually called the colorizer. And straight off the bat, we've got some color in there. So let's go and click on our colorizer to customize this a bit. Here's the colors we can see now. And if we pop this open, we can access the presets. You can also just change these manually, but we're gonna load a preset. Let's go with this colorful looking one. And that's updated here, but you're probably wondering why we can't see the red color on the end here. This is to do with the contrast adjustment we made in our noise before. So if we go into this copy of our noise, we can tweak that down here in the contrast. Sliding this back towards zero will just offset those colors. So now we can get them all in there. And that is pretty much it for this tutorial. If we just frame this up a bit, and now we've got our psychedelic looping abstract background. Let's just give it a final render to make sure everything's working nicely. Whoops, before we do that, we wanna put that subdivision surface back on. Let's give that a try. That's better, much smoother. And that brings us to the end of today's tutorial. As usual, you can download the project file below to save a bit of time. And you can get the final render set up for Octane on our Patreon page. If there's a tutorial you'd like to see, just plonk it down in the comment section and I will catch you next time. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you want to see in the comment section below. Or you can leave a like or dislike. And don't forget to subscribe and click on that little bell icon for more videos and free stuff. Catch you next time.